Pan International, Mr. Eddie Ibrahim. How's everybody doing on Sunday? Welcome to Hall H Sunday morning. and Richard. So, uh, how many of you have been here uh, a couple days before? How many all of the days? So, for those of you that are new in the room, I do want to say a little bit about the fact that this is Comic Con's 50th show. And, uh, yeah, thank you. And, uh, Really, really excited to have you guys be a part of it. And uh, one of the things that we want to kind of talk about is, I don't know if you knew, but Comic Con started with like 300 people. And now clearly we've grown just a little bit. <laughs> but one of the things that uh, has done that is you, the fans. We are so appreciative of all of you, just as all of the people that have been bringing panels are. You guys have been the shepherds of this content and this fandom. You guys have made it cool. You guys have made this the cool thing to be. So it's no longer just an itch thing. It's now something that everybody loves. And so for that, I want to give, I want you all to give yourselves a round of applause. For being the <laughs> <laughs> so and I hope that Comic Con can continue to kind of spearhead that for you guys and keep bringing you this great content, as well as all of the new stuff that you don't know you love that you will love. So for that, we really appreciate you being part of that. And of course, I'm sure there are quite a few out there that love what's coming up. Supernatural. <laughs> and uh, this one's going to be a bittersweet one, I think, for a lot of us. So, but it's going to be a great panel. So. How? Good one way to bring the room oh, down, oh, dude. Wow. Is, is that right. your way of saying Same, same emotion for when they actually come out here. <laughs> but uh, we are really, really happy to have such a great relationship with Warner Brothers Television. They have continued to support Comic Con with such great programming, uh, and we look forward to them continuing to do that. So, if there's any footage uh, shown on the screen, do us a favor, uh, please don't report it. You can talk about how you got to see it uh, and, and what it was, but do us a favor and not not it because we want to make sure that they continue to feel comfortable bringing us this great content. And with that, it is my pleasure to welcome one of our friends from Warner Brothers Television, uh, Holly Bolas. Good morning, Holly. Woo! I'm Holly Ollis from Warner Brothers Television Publicity, and welcome to Supernatural. September 13, 2005, and caught a little show about two demon hunting brothers crisscrossing the country in a badass car <laughs> in search of their missing dad. Or maybe a friend lent you their VHS tapes, remember those? <laughs> or maybe you happened to catch a bunch of reruns. Or maybe you weren't even born when the show started <laughs> and just watched all 14 seasons over a week last month. <laughs> Or maybe your ritual is, and has always been, to be parked in front of your TV every Thursday night at 9, 8 central in your Winchester plaid, tuned to the CW, like, just like you will be when the 15th and final season premieres on Thursday, October 10th. Whichever road you travel, it brought you right here, right now, to Hall H at this moment to be at the final San Diego Comic-Con panel for Supernatural, which I was again thrilled to say remains the longest running sci-fi genre series in the history of American crime time. Woo! And it always goes without saying, as always, it's all because of you, the amazing, awesome, and worldwide Supernatural family, who will always be Supernatural family forever. Speaking of those VHS tapes, now better known as DVDs or digital downloads, 
Warner Home Entertainment will also be releasing the complete 14th season on Blu-ray and DVD on September 10th, and it's available at digital retailers now. And if you haven't done so already, please stop by the DC Warner Brothers booth and pick up the Warner Brothers themed TV Guide magazine Comic-Con issue featuring these boys on one of the collective's covers. And now, it's just about supernatural time. Very soon, your favorite trickster, Richard Spade Jr. And wonderful Supernatural producers and host team have put together a very special reel just for you. It's a, it's a fond look back at the road so far, so please keep an eye out for some of your favorites. And finally, on a personal note, I just want to thank you all so much for being the best fan ever. our favorite characters from Supernatural. <laughs> we're out. We're cosplaying Sam and Dean in the rain. <laughs> it ain't kidding. We're actually, uh, we're actually in town uh, working on our, our next two-man show, Perverts, a musical. <laughs> Come check it out if you have a second. Or if you're pervert. I'll hold it. All right. <laughs> so, but really, guys, uh, we're super excited, you know, I can't believe we're back in Hall H. So oh. exciting. <laughs> really? You, you, you texted me what you were wearing. I assumed you wanted me to match. Never assume, Rich. It makes an ass out of you. And are we ready to do this thing? <laughs> And uh, to be here with you guys all these years, uh, we're going to bring out uh, a great group of people. That we have to bring out when they're on the list. That's right. That's right. <laughs> contractually obligated. Start us off, Robo. Yeah. So uh, first to the stage uh, is a, a writer who uh, has been writing for the show for the last six seasons, and he just got upgraded to executive producer. <coughs> and fun fact, he's one of three Roberts on the stage today. <laughs> executive producer, Bob Bobo Barrett! Oh. Woo! stage, this seasoned writing duo has given us countless blood characters and dynamic moments on screen for years. They are none other than executive producers, Brad Buckner and Eugenie Ross Fleming! Our next guest's very first job in TV was writing for Supernatural. After eight seasons in the trenches, he ascended to the coveted position of showrunner. Armed with genius talent and deep respect for the characters and stories, he has beautifully shouldered the show's vision for the past three seasons, and now leads us bravely forward into the show's final chapter. Exec executive producer and co-showrunner, Andrew Dad. Stage, uh, truly a lion of the industry. Uh, he has produced and directed hundreds of episodes of television, most notably the show we're all here to celebrate. Ever since the pilot got picked up by the network formerly known as the WB, he's been there crafting the stories both in the writer's room and behind the lens. If you love this show, you have this man to thank. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Singer. Uh, I get nothing. <laughs> I have a kiss from Bob. No. 
Diana. In the short time uh, this actor has been on the show, he's endeared himself to fans and veteran actors alike. Dry wit, raw talent abound. A welcome member of the Supernatural family and the sole representative of Canada on the stage today, <laughs> Alexander Calvert. <laughs> The next guy we're bringing out is truly one of a kind. He is a man who took a guest starring role and turned it into a core, iconic, and fan favorite character. In addition, he has also harnessed the power of his popularity to build one of the most successful philanthropic enterprises in entertainment. There is no more charitable man in Hollywood. The people he has helped and the lives he has touched will live on long after Castiel hangs up his trench coat for the final time. The one, the only, Misha Collins. Woo! In short, class acts. Ladies and gentlemen, Jensen Ackles and Jared Pelley! Hey, 
But there's a lot, there's a lot of weight behind this. I mean, you guys have been, you basically grew up as actors and as people on this show. Your lives are inexorably linked to each other and to the, the crew you've worked with. As it comes to this epic chapter, what, when you reflect back on it, what, what's your takeaway from the experience overall? That is the most it's grand it's question it's of it's all time. Pretty much. How's your it's life been, guys? Uh, becoming a father and a parent and an actor, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> Jared and Jensen. Well, my, favorite, my follow up question is what's your favorite color? So, <laughs> blue, blue. Uh, go blue. <laughs> um, uh, uh, in all honesty, uh, I feel. Uh, Jensen? <laughs> The, the takeaway from, from the experience. Um, you know, 15 years is a, is a long, well, we'll say 14 and change. Um, it's, a, it's a long time. Um, you know, this guy was, was just in his early 20s. I was and just born. You were just born. <laughs> and uh, and, and we, we hooked it up to Vancouver, uh, thinking that, you know, we just put our lives on hold, just press pause for maybe a season, maybe two. We knew we had something good. We might have even gotten something like three seasons out of it. That's asking too much. And, <laughs> and then we would then, you know, come back and, and, and press play and life would go on and it, uh, it, it never got up pause and I'm, I'm very thankful that it didn't. Because um, it's, uh, it's been quite a ride and um, it's hard to, to express uh, what we're, what we're going to take away from that. But lifelong friends, Experiences of a lifetime, and uh, I mean, this is sir. It's hard to Thank you all so much. Um, Misha, your journey has been a little bit different. You started as a guest star in the show, and then worked your way up to being such an integral part of it. Um, what are your feelings about it coming to an end? Your journey. Um, you know, I, I, when I got on the show, I, I just recently found a gold card, it's these three by five note cards that I write around New Year's, They're really nerdy, but it's like, here are my goals for the year, and the year before I got on Supernatural, I had written this goal of, I, I'm, a, I'm a regular on a show that is creatively fulfilling, and, uh, and I become lifelong friends with the cast. <laughs> and I, um, I have found this show to be, I mean, I, I just came across that and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that I wrote that. I can't believe that this has come to pass. I consider these guys lifelong friends. You guys, lifelong friends, and I know that none of you like me, but <laughs> semantics, <that's> semantics. <laughs> but I could never, I could never have dreamed that along with that would come this incredible fandom and this kind of iconic legacy of a show, and uh, it feels like a great honor to have been a part of it, and uh, and I look forward to you know writing a new goal card. And you guys are going to be on it for sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Do you have plans for the immediate future? Or anything yet? Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I uh, just finished writing a cookbook with my wife, and uh, that's you can you know buy that on Amazon now. It's the Adventurous Eaters Club, um, and uh, I'm uh, hoping to develop six pack abs. <laughs> well, 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 well. Uh, <laughs> so having, having seen you really quickly, Misha, having seen you shirtless, don't go there. <laughs> you want to lose two of your ab muscles? <laughs> uh, I've seen the manips. I've seen the photo manips. A few of them. You're usually pretty ripped in those jeans and stuff. <laughs> Big Al, Cal. Yeah, uh, let's follow up on the nipple question. Yeah. <laughs> we have it on our notes here. After nipple, <laughs> after Jake goes to nipple, we really go to Alex. Uh, Thanks, guys. Sorry, so, Misha, what about you, buddy? Are you, 
you've got to be planned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about, uh, <laughs> what, about uh, what about Jack's journey at the end of, uh, good save, good save, yeah. everybody. Uh, at the end of last season, so the guy who played God was not very nice to you. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've heard some not so great things about both the character and the person. Well, so. that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. That's not fair to say, Al. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, where, where, do you, where do you see Jack going this year? Can I confirm that Jack is in back in some capacity? I think you just did. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Well, that's Anyone can chime in here. Uh, yeah, Jack had a, a real, uh, you know, not so great end to the season. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. For me, I think uh, Jack's journey and, and, and mine on this, my small part on this show, has just been uh, truly, truly incredible. So I'm just excited for, for all of these people and, and for, for you guys as well, just to really see this journey come to an end. Yeah. Well, we love having you on the show. It's been. Great addition to the cast. Uh, Bob, who's a singer, one of the Bob, one of the three Bob, Bob number one, we'll call you. Um, you've been around, you know, minus a pilot for the whole run of the show. You also have a, a long and history journey through the annals of television in your career. This is a rare breed, a show that lasts this long and has maintained its original cast. So much of its crew is still the original crew. I, it's hard to, I would imagine, but how do you explain this lightning in a bottle phenomenon? Like, this has never happened. What made you unique, unique in this scenario? Well, well, first of all, I want to say that what I'm worried about mostly is that this time next year, you guys will be looking for a gig, so. <laughs> and we have your number. Okay. Um, well, I think, uh, I, I think you start with Jared Jensen, you know, when you cast these shows, you, you don't know, you know, is there going to be, you know, you could have two great actors who have no magic in a bottle with them. Uh, these guys, right, from the jump, uh, you just believe them, they're close personally, they're closest characters, and, you know, over the course of 14 seasons, you're going to have some scripts that are less good than others, uh, but they always give their level solid best, and they, and they carry us through that uh, maybe, you know, not as good as the French would say. Um, <laughs> uh, I think the other thing was, I think Eric uh, created uh, these two characters, and Eric and I worked together closely for the first five years, and I think there was a... Yeah, I'll cheer for Eric. foundation of what the show could be was, was built fairly early and I think when Eric left us he left us with a, a lot of a lot of good things. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of working with Sarah for a couple of years and Jeremy and now Andrew. Um, and I think they stepped into that role as, as good as possible. So you know for me it's just been a joy. Um, you know you never imagined 15 years but it seems to have gone by you know awfully quick because uh, Pretty much enjoyed every minute. Um, okay, Andrew. Uh, so at the end of last season, we left our guys surrounded by what seemed like zombies, and uh, you know, with the past, you know, hunts returning from hell. We, we, in all fairness, we didn't leave them surrounded by zombies. You did. Oh. <laughs> Deal with it. Uh, so. Uh, you know, in past seasons the endings have felt big, but this time we know it's the end. So how do we how do we move forward? Uh, we don't. It's 20 episodes of clip, clip shows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot do the last 14, so why try? That's okay. my opinion. Well, good to know. Good to know. Just for myself, in terms of yeah. what I'll be doing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, now you're wide open. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eugene and Brad. Uh, what about? God. He's not the God of your. He's not the, the nice guy that he once was. <laughs> he's pretty pissed. Um, Apparently a real jerk on set. Well, <laughs> but great looking. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you move forward uh, with uh, that entity? Uh, and I'm not asking for personal reasons. Really, truly. 
Um, how, how do you think that will shape this season and where we go this season? Well, I, I think that final moment, uh, at very end of the season finale, is probably one of the big game-changing moments we've ever had on the show. And to be 14 seasons in on the show and be able to have that much of a game changer is, is something. Because there was a, an assumption about God. We talked about God being having left the building. He was not around. He was a long distance guy and really had hands off. And that was confirmed when Chuck appeared for the first time a couple of seasons ago. And But that was really the rule. And, and the boys bought into that belief that they were willing to accept a God who was hands off and sort of let free will take over and humans would do what they were going to do. And he would step in as needed, maybe. But this changed everything. Suddenly we have a God who never did leave the building, really. He was standing in the shadows, manipulating, creating stories, and watching how the boys were going to respond to this. So this really messes with your entire belief system. When you believe one set of things, and it's bad enough to not buy into the whole thing of, about God is all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful, but had left the building, and now everything changes because you can't even accept what he told you initially was the truth. That turned out not to be the truth. It's like actively uh, an opponent. You're, you're living uh, your life based on that quicksand. You don't know if any step you're taking is an authentic step that you're initiating yourself, or is everything an illusion or pre-planned by this kind of diabolical deity. So for all of us, it's kind of, um, I know, it's a big, <laughs> it's a funny show, really. <laughs> so we're sort of playing with each other uh, uh, as writers trying to figure out what it really means. It's, I think it's, it's the last year, so we have a chance to take chances we didn't have before. We're, we're, we're building to something that we all have to have a consensus on, but it's an answer that can never really be final. And I think it has many tentacles, and we'll be seeing them played out through the season. But basically, it's, it's kind of exciting for us. Sorry. And we'll follow up to you, uh, Boba. Um, we know that every year you build the season up to the big bad that's going to carry us through the next year. In this instance, we that's perhaps the biggest bad that can be conjured in the form of God. How do you see that playing out from a character standpoint for for God this season? Well, I think it's a build off what Brad and Gene were just talking about. What is really exciting about this Chuck reveal at the end of last season is that it really opens up the theme of free will, which is what we've been dealing with this entire time. And I think the way that this news lands on both Sam and Dean, we'll see them sort of respond very differently at different points to this news. And I think it puts everything they've done, everything they've accomplished into doubt. What was them, what was this plan? And I think the position of the show is, yes, you did save the day, those were authentic victories, but they have to struggle with that and sort of reclaim you know, the, the victories that are past and say, no, this was us, we do have free will, and it's just that dynamic is gonna play out really interestingly throughout the whole season. Awesome, now, Andrew, to you as, as the co-show runner along the pop, you know, you've been handed this assignment of taking a literary show that everybody loves and followed for 15 years and sending it off into the night in the best way you know how. You've come up the ranks of the show, like you started as a baby writer, and now you're, you're co-boss. Uh, how did it feel to know that this, this creative energy would be voiced in a bunch? Well, the good news is there was no pressure. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's the best news. Um, no, I've been on the show for 12 years, and I worked with Eric and Sarah and Jeremy. And Newbie. <laughs> yeah. And Richard and Paul, it's like, no. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's been a show that's been a real part of my life. Like, first time I've had television, um, possibly last we'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so to have the honor to kind of end it along with Bob and Fred and Jeannie and uh, Bob and everybody on the stage, minus one. Um, it's just really, uh, it's really exciting uh, and scary. And I think you know the, the things we have in mind. I think you know I would guess about like thirty percent of people would be really happy. Yeah. Aim to please a yeah. third. That's our product. Don't go for the majority. Just yeah. go for like, you know. So seven out of ten of everybody in this room is going to be pissed. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> if you thought Game of Thrones was angry. Yeah, I mean. Oh! oh. <laughs> well. Oh, don't act like you thought the 
same day. <laughs> Robert and Segway, let's go right into this. Robert, can we take some Yeah, I know you guys, you guys are here to ask questions, so let's throw it out there. Audience, questions. Okay, so um, first, this is about that Supernatural parody 2 by Hollywood. And Misha, I loved you, and you did great to name. Uh, so this is including Richard and Rob. How did you guys come to get involved in it, and you know if this could be a third parody? Yeah, the parody, the Hollywood Girls parody, uh, how did you become involved in it this time? And so the Hollywood Girls um, had little bits of, of blackmail against all of us. <laughs> and they leveraged that to get us to come work on that production. Yeah, so I guess if we're going to do a third one, it depends on if they threaten us again. <laughs> yeah, they have been threatening me. Oh, so he's just doing another one. Great. Uh, those girls are super talented. They, they do such funny work and it's great homage to the show. And I think the first one was such a success that it was an easy ask to get everybody to come on board and do number two. Alright, next question. Hi guys. Love you. Hi. Um, my question is, so since this is a final season, is there anything you haven't got to do on the show that you really want to do? That's a great question. Uh, as far as that haven't happened to us on the show that I would like to have. Great question. Uh, thank you. Um, I mean, I, we always would kind of joke in the last 307 episodes <laughs> that it would be fun to but who's counting. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun to, uh, to go to a beach in Maui or something. <laughs> or, uh, or, or, or do, you know, like do laundry in our underwear and a laundromat somewhere. <laughs> but Misha's not ready, unfortunately. <laughs> he has to lose two of his ab muscles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but obviously, as we all know, who's been, who's been uh, controlling what the boys are doing, we haven't been able to do that. So look to Rob Benedict, please. Um, yeah. I mean, come on, man. You're right. Almighty. Almighty creator. All right, Maui. You're Chuck. <laughs> Maui. Uh, I love you, man. I love you, man. Don't be a little bit. There's a, for me, there's nothing I, I, I want to do that I haven't done yet. I'm just really uh, honored and humbled to be able to have done so much already. If you could be taking knowledge of the track. <laughs> Get a little student money for the boys. <laughs> I like that. Win a t-shirt. I don't know. <laughs> Are we not spitballing up here? No, no, that's it. That's it. I like win a t-shirt. Scribbling notes. Wet t-shirt contest with Misha. <laughs> Maybe they go to Cabo and get trapped in a phone party. I don't know. We're working things out. We're working things out. We're not there yet. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi guys, thank you so much for 15 incredible years and 